Hello and welcome. You're looking at the greatest curve in all of cardiovascular medicine. And if you didn't know that, you will today. And if you don't today, I don't think I have anything more to offer. Knowing this is obligatory. It's the Frank Starling mechanism. And what you see is a mechanism which states that the stroke volume increases in response to an increased preload, otherwise known as an LV end diastolic volume, preload and LV EDV. More volume in the ventricle means more stretch on the ventricle, and this causes the cardiac muscles to contract more forcefully, and that is the so-called Frank Starling mechanism. It's the heart's intrinsic way of synchronizing the cardiac output with an increased venous return. The graph on the left is the Frank Starling mechanism, and the graph on the right is another classic graph known as the force tension curve. And here is how they work. The Frank Starling curve goes like this. If you have a decreased preload, you have less stretch. Thus, you have a less forceful contraction and thus less stroke volume. If preload is increased, you have more myocardial stretch and thus a greater force of contraction and hence a greater stroke volume. The force tension curve tells us that stroke volume is not only a function of preload but afterload as well. And they're inversely related. So if you have a greater afterload, you have a decreased stroke volume. If you have a decreased afterload, you have an increased stroke volume. So pretty simple so far. And now what else besides preload and afterload can affect the stroke volume? There's only three things. So what's the third thing? Contractility. So looking at the Frank Starling curve, we can actually shift this entire curve upward with inotropy, otherwise known as contractility. And you should know that this is through beta-1 stimulation. In contrast, beta blockers will shift this curve downwards due to decreased inotropy. Now the other way to shift the curve upward is the following. You decrease the afterload. So if you decrease the afterload, you increase the stroke volume. Likewise, the force tension curve can also be shifted upward with an increase in beta-1 stimulation, increased contractility. And the only other way to shift that curve upward is by increasing the preload. Again, there's only three things that will affect the stroke volume. Preload, contractility, and afterload. So if you understand these concepts, you should be able to figure out the following exercise. So here's an example. A drug was given to a patient and it caused the following changes to occur on the Frank Starling and Force Tension graphs. So the black solid dot represents the stroke volume, preload and afterload before the drug was given and the open dot represents the stroke volume preload and afterload after the drug was given. Now it's up to us to figure out what the mechanism of the drug is and from there hopefully we can derive the drug or its class. So first we can appreciate the two graphs. We'll appreciate the changes but now let's focus on one of the graphs first. So let's go over here to the force tension graph. Since we do not see an increased or decreased shift, this means that there have been no changes in the preload or contractility, right? The only change we see is a decrease in afterload. So from this graph, we can see unequivocally that there is no change in preload or contractility, and thus we can swing over to this curve over here, the Frank Starling curve, and we can cross out contractility and preload, and then all we are left with is a decrease in afterload. And that leads us to our answer. So the drug that was given is an afterload reducer, and in this case, it was hydralazine. Simple enough? Let's go on to a more difficult example. Can you name the drug that was given to this patient? So this example is a bit more challenging, but very doable if we just follow the simple rule and rather intuitive system that we used last time. So in this example, we do the same thing as before. So let's turn our attention to just one of the two graphs. So let's start with the Starling curve this time. And it doesn't really matter where you start. So for example, do we see a change in preload? No. So why don't we cross that off? In fact, we'll go over here now to the force tension curve. And while we're over here, we'll cross that off as well. And what do we see over here? Well, we do see a decrease in afterload. So let's circle that and swing back on over to the Frank Starling curve. And 
We notice that the decrease after load explains one of the upward shifts here. But now what about the second upward shift? Yup, increased contractility. And we see that increased contractility also accounts for the shift over on the force tension curve, since we've already determined that preload is not doing anything. And that leads us to the type of drug that this patient is on. So this would be an afterload reducer and also an inotropic agent. And can you name a drug that can do that? That's an afterload reducer and an inotropic agent. How about isoproteranol? So this patient was on isoproteranol, a beta-1 and beta-2 agonist. The beta-1 effect increases inotropy, and the beta-2 effect causes arterial dilation, decreasing the afterload. And there you go. That's all I have for you. I strongly encourage that you go over these examples again on your own, and you can play around with the different ways of approaching these, and hopefully you come up with the same answer every time. So that's the Frank Starling mechanism in action. I think it's uh, good to always have these concepts in mind when you administer cardiac meds while you're thinking about afterload, preload, and contractility. Thanks again for joining. I hope that you took something away from this exercise. So long and goodbye.